Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Islam and the News. I am your host, Tony Grule, and it is a blessing to have you here on ABN and the Trinity Channel for another episode, another hour-long episode of many news stories that you will not hear anywhere else. Today is January 13th in the year of our Lord, 2017. If you missed last week's show, we want to wish you a happy new year from everyone here at ABN and the Trinity Channel. It's a blessing uh, to have uh, you support this network and allow shows like this to continue because this show, as well as the other weekly shows, are broadcast not only online and through many platforms such as Roku and IPTV, Smart TV, uh, Amazon Fire, and even Apple TV now as well. But this is also broadcast through satellite to the Middle East, North Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, we've had thank yous from people in Malaysia, Indonesia, where we, as far as we know, the signal cannot be picked up. So obviously there are many, many people out there who are watching this show as well as all of our other shows through high-speed internet. And it's a blessing to have these technological advances, which of course many times are used for evil, but God can use them for good. So it's a blessing uh, to be doing this. And again, for you to be here and to uh, support this ministry that the Lord is using mightily for his glory. So welcome to Islam and the News. Starting right off, uh, we have here from al Alam, uh, Russia and Turkey sign agreement on coordinating airstrikes in Syria against ISIS and Nusra, or al-Nusra. Russian and Turkish military officials have agreed to coordinate aerial attacks against the positions of foreign-sponsored militant groups in Syria and signed a memorandum on combat flight safety during missions in Syrian airspace. It says the Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement that the agreement reached in Moscow during a Thursday meeting specifies a course of action to avoid incidents during flights over Syrian airspace. Now, of course, if Russia and Turkey are working together to fight ISIS, that is a great thing. It would be great if all the countries throughout the world uh, united to fight ISIS. But of course, there are all countries out there who are supporting ISIS. And um, she, of course, did not win the presidential election, but uh, Hillary Clinton, I have a new story here. Um, I just brought up the news story in, in order to, to tell you what it says. But this is back actually from October. But back in October, Hillary was talking about uh, a no-fly zone. And it says here why Clinton's plan for no-fly zones in Syria could provoke U.S.-Russia conflict. Uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, <laughs> if uh, U.S. and Russia or, again, any other countries are trying to fight ISIS— uh, why would she even want a no-fly zone? I mean, th this has got me thinking, okay, does ISIS have uh, fighter pilots? Do, does ISIS have jets that they're flying over uh, these air spaces and, and fighting people? No. So if ISIS does not have air support, then why would you have a no-fly zone over the territories where ISIS are, right? If, if uh, you have ISIS in different areas— and you're trying to fight them, and you're able to do so effectively through air support, why would you have a no-fly zone, right? So uh, it, it, that doesn't even make sense. And again, many people are happy that she did not win the election because of her policies on many things. But uh, we are still praying for people in the Middle East who are suffering under ISIS. There have been a number of news stories that ISIS has lost particular territories that they once had a strong uh, hold of. And there's other areas that they're, of course, moving into trying to get back um, that uh, power or that control of certain geographical areas. So uh, we want to continue to pray for Christians throughout the world who, again, um, are under ISIS's control. We also want to pray for ISIS that the Lord, who is the only person who can do this, draw people to his Son. God the Father can draw people uh, throughout the world to his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We've seen a number of news stories where ISIS commanders have actually uh, had dreams about Jesus, and that's a phenomenon that we hear about all the time. The Lord is using one of the ways that Muslims believe they can communicate with God through dreams and visions 
the the all wise God, the true God of the Bible, is actually reaching Muslims that way through dreams and visions. So uh, we praise God for that. And uh, moving into the U.S. and there's other countries, of course, that we're going to be talking about here as well. But uh, just quickly to the U.S., there's a new story that you probably saw in the mainstream media over the last couple of weeks, and that was the uh, shooting incident that happened at a Fort Lauderdale, Florida airport, where there was a, a man who supposedly uh, flew to Florida from Alaska. He didn't have any luggage other than, I guess, he checked a, a um, container that held his firearm. And uh, no one really thought anything odd of this, I guess. And uh, this man ended up uh, shooting and wounding uh, numerous people and killing numerous people, uh, which is obviously unfortunate. But I have here from judicialwatch.org, airport shooter converted to Islam, identified as Aishik Mah uh, Hamad years before jo joining army. It says the Fort Lauderdale airport shooter is a Muslim convert who years before joining the U.S. Army took on an Islamic name, uh, Azhik Hamad, downloaded terrorist propaganda and recorded Islamic religious music online, according to public records dug up by the investigative news site of an award-winning California journalist. This is a pertinent. This is pertinent information that the Obama administration apparently wants to keep quiet, bringing up memories of the Benghazi cover-up, which the president and his cohorts knowingly lied to conceal that Islamic terrorists attacked the U.S. special mission in Libya. So, uh, I want to show you another uh, picture here, because what uh, I want to ask you what you see. Uh, is that what is similar in this picture here. So we have about uh, four pictures here in this next photo. And I want you to look and see. I mean, this is this here is the picture of the of uh, the guy the, at the Fort, Fort Lauderdale airport um, when he was doing the shooting. But we have another photo that we want to show that has uh, four pictures. It has the the uh, guy, and then it has uh, some other terrorists from the past that you probably recognize. I believe that is picture uh, 3.2 that we want to show. But this picture here, if you didn't see that in the in the in the news, uh, this one is the picture of, uh, of course, um, surveillance from the airport itself. But uh, you know, we we read that you know this isn't surprising. I mean, people throughout the the world, mainly here in the U.S. and the West, who are like. Uh, well, why, why is this happening? You know, isn't Islam a religion of peace? Uh, there may be Muslims in certain parts of the world who are like, hey, why is this happening? You know, Islam's a, a, a religion of peace, right? Well, uh, no, it is not. Uh, if someone actually told you that Islam is a religion of peace, um, there's two situations here. Either they're ignorant of Islam or they're lying to you. You know, both happen all the time. Obviously, there's a lot of people who don't know about Islam. Uh, people say that Islam is the religion of peace, but uh, it's probably more accurate to call it the religion of pieces, because that's what people end up in many times when they uh, cross a certain individual. But also, too, if you don't know the Islamic theology and what they mean by peace, if they actually sincerely um, know what they mean it mean by peace, but don't communicate that to you, you know, we have to ask, well, what do you mean by peace? Because in Islam, uh, peace doesn't mean American freedom. Peace just means lack of opposition. So if the goal of Islam is to have a whole world under Sharia and to have a, a worldwide caliphate, then there would be peace, quote unquote, uh, in that there would not be any opposition to the worldview of Islam or the ideology of Islam, or especially uh, any um, uh, Dar al Harb territories of the world, because the whole world is Dar al Islam, and the whole world is under Sharia, well, then, in a sense, in the mind of a Muslim, well, now, you know, there is peace. There's worldwide peace because the whole world is under Islam. So, again, if you don't know the theology and if you uh, are, are ignorant of Islam and you just hear, oh, yeah, Islam is a religion of peace, Islam is a religion of peace. Then it sounds like, okay, well, that means peace 
uh, no fighting. That means American freedom. That means uh, religious freedom and all that kind of stuff. No, it, me- it has a, a different uh, denotation, a different um, definition of what the word peace means. So unless you know what that means, um, that's why a lot of people out there get, get confused. And that's why a lot of people don't question it as much as they should. Because if you study the primary sources, if you study the life of Muhammad, you don't see a whole lot of peace in there, right? I mean, when you see him fighting, you hear about Muhammad murdering people, beheading Jews. Uh, that doesn't sound peaceful, quote unquote, right? So uh, really, you really need to ask, well, what do you mean by peace? What do you mean by this? What do you mean by that? It's so important when we talk with anybody to ask, what do you mean by blank? You know, whatever they just said, uh, very important to ask questions. But you'll notice that in that picture of that shooter, he had his finger up uh, like this. He wasn't saying, uh, I'm number one or anything like that, but just like other uh, terrorists that we've seen in the last six months, uh, the, the common thing is that everyone's doing this. What are they doing? They're proclaiming that Allah is the, 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 the only God, right? They're, they're proclaiming pure monotheism, that uh, Allah is one. They're, they're proclaiming Tawheed, that, uh, that the, of course, that would say, okay, well, Trinity is false. There is no other God. The thing is that Christians, we only believe in one God, you know? We, we would say, hey, there's one God, right? The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. But a, m- a lot of Muslims out there, they don't understand the difference between uh, nature or essence and personhood. As I am one person, but I'm a human being, there's other human beings out there who are not me. We're different people. We're different persons. Where the God of the Bible, when we say God, we're not, we're not using the word God as a name, like a law, which is just generic for the God. A law is not a personal name, right? But Yahweh, the God of the Bible, is a personal name, but God is not a person. God is a nature. So we say, okay, well, who is God? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. What is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? God. So God is a divine nature. God is not a person. So the Quran doesn't um, say that there isn't one God and there's three persons who are God, it denies tritheism. And tritheism, three separate individual gods, is not something that Christians believe or that the Bible teaches anyway. So uh, the, the Quran denies the Trinity, but it denies a wrong Trinity, a Trinity that Orthodox Christianity never taught to begin with. So when you see these terrorists doing this, they are proclaiming that they're doing it in the name of their God, their false God, or their false understanding of God, because they don't, of course, not understand who God truly is. He does not requiring them to go out and kill people to please him or to build up these good scales. No, we need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he said to do. So, uh, not surprising that the followers of Muhammad would emulate Muhammad in every way if they truly try to do so. Now, the FBI is correct. That is the wording here from understandingthethreat.com. It says, FBI correct, Sharia adherent Muslims have mental issues. It says, the FBI got one thing right. Like all Sharia adherent Muslims, Santiago, and again, Santiago is the last name of this gentleman who you see right here, is not mentally aligned with civilized society. Santiago's family said, he, uh, he, quote, lost his mind and says he has never been the same since he came back from Iraq. This may all be true. Uh, it says, it, it is, it, isn't it interesting how jihadis who have been investigated by the FBI with no action taken wind up killing and or wounding Americans in places like Little Rock, Boston, New York, San Bernardino, Orlando, and elsewhere, and are then dubbed, quote, mentally ill. Obviously, you know, obviously, if you're out there uh, murdering people, murdering innocent people, then you have a mental issue going on. The question is, what is the cause of that mental issue? Is it a uh, false religious ideology? Uh, For example, like this guy right here. Uh, Yes, it is, just like other terrorists who we have seen in the past. So they are never dubbed Islamic jihadis or Islamic terrorists, but that is exactly what they are. 
Now here from centerforsecuritypolicy.org, it says Rex Tillerson to fight, not embrace the Muslim Brotherhood. Candidate Donald Trump promised to change dramatically the direction of U.S. policy towards what he called radical Islamic terrorism. In the course of the campaign, Mr. Trump noted that in it, that its animating force, the toxic ideology called Sharia, is incompatible with our constitution and values. Now, Secretary of State designate Rex Tillerson has recognized officially a reality long ignore a reality long ignored by the Obama administration. The Muslim Brotherhood is part of the problem, not part of the solution regarding Sharia's inherent efforts to dominate the entire world. Mr. Tillerson testified during his confirmation hearing yesterday that Muslim that the Muslim Brotherhood is a quote agent for radical Islam like Al Qaeda and certain elements within Iran. That means the Brotherhood must no longer be allowed to operate with impunity in this country engaging in stealthy infrastructure building radicalization and influence operations for over 50 years. So uh, as you have seen, a video that has been shown here on uh, ABN's Trinity Channel is the Muslim Brotherhood Origin Identity and Agenda. If you have not seen that, please go to my Facebook page or go to my Vimeo, Vimeo channel, V-I-M-E-O forward slash of Vimeo.com forward slash Tony Gurley, and you will find a 48-minute informative video on the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, also from understandingthethreat.com, we have Muslim Brotherhood Hamas orgs in Chicago using interfaith outreach to surveil churches. After UTT published its article yesterday, uh, this is referring to December 19th, 2016, revealing Muslims are conducting pre-operation surveillance in American churches. UTT, and again, that's understanding the threat, was contacted by law enforcement, intelligence sources, and others. From these discussions, it was revealed that members of the Council of Islamic Organizations of Greater Chicago, that's CIOGC, are using interfaith outreach with Christian churches and Jewish synagogues for the purpose of one, studying them to inter internally, studying them internally to determine how to best influence their congregations to soften them towards Islam, and two, to conduct pre-operational surveillance of the churches and synagogues. It says law enforcement officials are aware. CIOGC is tied directly to the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood and is heavily, influ heavily influenced by Hamas doing business as the Council on Is American Islamic Relations, that's also known as CARE, C-A-I-R. Uh, it is uh, understanding the threat's professional opinion. The executive director of CARE, Nihad Awad, is the Muslim Brotherhood's general Masul, the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. So uh, please look up the Muslim Brotherhood if you have not so far, because they have the same worldview as the jihadists who are out there actually fighting every day. But because the Muslim Brotherhood's not there out there fighting every day, they don't wind up on the nightly news like the jihadists do. So uh, their biggest problem with the jihadists is that they're moving too fast too soon. But the jihadists, whatever name you want to give them, and the Muslim Brotherhood both have the same worldview of wanting the world to be under Sharia, even though those may be on different timelines, uh, one moving faster than the other. But going to dailycaller.com, we have immigration official okays Syrian immigrants with fake passports. We just have a photo for you here, but if you go to my Facebook page, you can actually watch this entire video. It's an undercover video of a lady going into um, an office where she is saying, hey, I know of this family who are here, they don't have passports, um, you know, kind of worried about them because I wanna make sure that they're taken care of. And this guy who you see here, he guarantees them pretty much that they will be taken care of, that uh, not having a passport is okay, I guess, quote unquote. But again, you can't find that full video on my, uh, YouTube, on my uh, Facebook page. And the video was created by uh, Laura Loomer, an undercover activist for Pamela Geller's American Freedom Defense Initiative, AFDI, and also uh, Robert Spencer uh, works with, with her with that as well. Now, 
we see here that it's, it's not just obviously people who are actually in need and coming to Europe and coming to America. But, you know, ISIS has said themselves that they are going to be infiltrating um, this group, right? They're going to try to blend in with the refugees to make their way to the West. And I have here from express.co.uk, it says, everyone will be Muslim because of our stupidity. This is what a Catholic leader uh, blasts and calls it a, a, a weak church. This is a prominent figure in the Catholic Church has controversially suggested that everyone will, quote, soon be Muslim, unquote, because Italy lives in an increasingly secular society amid rapidly growing migration figures. So obviously there are people in need, but of course, like we said, uh, as you'll find on many videos out there, is the best um, solution bringing them to the West, whether that be Europe or the U.S., can these countries take care of them, uh, you know, financially? And you know, can we handle it uh, in a spiritually? And that's why the, the second one, of course, which the church can control, is that Christians out there need to be reaching out to Muslims. And of course, you see a Muslim walking down the street, uh, a lady in a hijab, or you see a Muslim family. You don't know right off the bat if they're uh, immigrants who came here you know, 15 years ago, or if they're refugees who just got here last week. Uh, but the only way you're going to find out is if you actually attempt to reach out to your Muslim neighbors, say hello, and you know, talk with them. And that's going to be so different than what they are used to, because so many people are afraid of them for wrong reasons. And yes, there are many Muslims throughout the world, and many Muslims do live peaceful lives. And if Muslims are here because they want freedom, because they don't want to live under Sharia, then that is a good thing. And here we can legally talk with them, sharing the gospel, giving them a Bible, which they cannot hear, of course, you know, the gospel if they don't know any Christians in the country where they came from. And of course, they could not have a Bible in the country that they came from if it was illegal to have one or for people to, you know, go out and distribute them. So reach out to your Muslim neighbors. Uh, build relationships with them, show them the, the love of, of Jesus, and share the gospel with them. Because Muslims, as we've said, are the greatest victims. They're believing the lie of Islam. You know, we say, hey, if, if, we're, if we hate anything, we don't hate Muslims, right? We hate Islam, because Islam is a lie that sends people to hell. Because people will die and end up in hell if they don't repent and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, have a problem with the worldview, with the man-made lie religion of Islam, but don't have a problem with Muslims who are at your work or in your neighborhood or who you see at the store, because Muslims are people made in the image of God who need a savior, but they can only know about the savior when someone tells them about the savior. So that either takes words from your mouth, or it takes a gospel tract, or it takes handing somebody a, a New Testament, at least, or preferably the whole Bible. But we need to reach out to our Muslim neighbors, love them, and love them enough to share the gospel with them as well. Now we have here, because again, this is not happening everywhere, and a lot of these refugees are going to Europe uh, to different countries in Europe, and I, I've heard that there are different, um, there's a different process of refugees going to Europe than there is coming here to the U.S. I've heard uh, supposedly that there are more uh, things in place to kind of vet people a little bit better who are coming to the U.S., even though we know that none of the vetting is as strong as it should be. But unfortunately, a lot of guys who come from a country where women are all covered up you know, they don't know how to act when a woman is wearing perfume instead of a hijab. You know, they don't know how to act when a woman is wearing perfume instead of a burqa. Uh, they, they don't know how to, how to react. And this oppression, the sexual oppression as well, of course, is part of this equation. But here from barenakedislam.com, yet another horrific story about Sweden's Muslim immigrant rape culture. Now, Sweden considered, okay, listen to this, 
Sweden, now considered the rape capital of the West due to its leftist agenda of admitting inexhaustible supply, an inexhaustible supply of Muslim rapists posing as refugees, is reporting yet another victim of multi-Muslim culturalism. Even worse, let's to this, Swedish feminazis seem to have no problem with the soaring rape crisis perpetuated by Muslim invaders. Now look at this next photo. Uh, Swedish feminists, please don't protect us if we get raped by immigrants. Okay, so dumbness truly is everywhere, uh, regardless of which country you go to. But this article says, after Swedish police raided a hookah cafe managed by two Syrian Muslim refugees, 28-year-old Khalid Aziz Hegers and 23-year-old Tarek uh, Bakar, they discovered a kidnapped Swedish woman chained in the shop's basement. The brutalized victim was being kept as their own personal sex slave and had been reportedly raped and tortured by at least seven Arab Muslim men. The horrific revelation provided investigators with proof that the unnamed woman had been kidnapped at gunpoint from Malmo before a group of four Muslim asylum seekers transported her by car to the cafe. She was then chained to a water pipe in the basement of the lounge in his Helsingborg, Helsingborg, where the men repeatedly gang raped her. Now this next photo says multiculturalism, the gang rape of hundreds of working class white schoolgirls is a small price to pay. And it says endorsed by the liberal left. So uh, again, not only is, is obviously this a, a huge problem, but the liberal left, the ignorant left, who the Muslim Brotherhood and different Islamist politically is you know politically minded Islamist groups are actually willing to work with. Unlike ISIS, right? ISIS is just out there fighting. They don't want to have anything to do with uh, using the system to undermine the system, uh, using freedoms against us, using our own laws and and and, and liberties against us. Uh, the liberal left is open to working with these Islamists, and we are seeing what is happening. Now, America, I've said this so many times before, America and other countries look to the UK, look to Europe, see what is happening there, because there's only two things we can do, learn from their mistakes or follow in their footsteps. Now, please think about that for another minute or two while we take a short break, and we will be back here very quickly with Islam and the news, so please stay tuned. ABN viewers, to watch free reruns of our marathon shows, apologetic shows, and English programs, go to www.youtube.com and type Trinity Channel. Here at ABN, we make it easier for viewers like you to watch programs. For more information, call us at 248-416-1300. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Islam and the News. Today is January 13th in the year of our Lord, 2017. It's a blessing to have you back here for more news headlines that you will not hear in the mainstream media. Uh, yeah, you hear many uh, news stories here that you will not hear anywhere else, and that's why it is a blessing for you to be here with us. And again, please uh, save this to your favorites. Take these episodes of Islam in the News that are on our YouTube channel, share those with people through email, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it everywhere else that they're on social media. That is the only way that this information is going to get out to people who don't know about this television network and don't know about this and the other shows that happen every single week, as well as two new shows that are coming up just at the end of this month. On Mondays, we're going to have Colliding Worldviews, which is going to be a show pretty close to our marathon shows. People love the Apologetics Marathon, so each Monday, Colliding Worldviews at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time will be like that. Then at 7 p.m., we have Ratio Christie Television, which many people are excited about. And of course, still on Tuesdays, we have The Cross and the Crescent with Pastor Joseph. And we have other shows in Arabic and other languages on, on Wednesday on, and Thursday. And of course, Fridays, 
here we have Islam and the news. And also, too, if you're a prayer warrior, please check out a show on Thursdays, an English show called uh, The Gospel of the Kingdom. And uh, all of these shows are available for you for free because other people out there, maybe you too, if, you, if this is you, we thank you. But there are many people throughout the world who support ABN and the Turney Channel, and that is what gets all of these shows out to the world through satellite, through uh, high-speed internet, and through all the different internet platforms that we have. So we thank the Lord for you. We thank the Lord for your gifts and we thank the Lord for the technological advances that allow us to get this news and all of this information, the gospel, evidence for Christianity, out to the world. So thank you once again. Now, a little while back, you heard, you may have heard a story about a boy who has been dubbed a clock boy because he had, he had taken a device to his school which uh, a, a teacher administrator thought was a bomb and ended up, you know, ended up, of course, being in the news and all that. Uh, it says here from uh, pjmedia.com, clock boy loses in court, father's defamation lawsuit dismissed. And uh, this is, a, it says here, a year earlier, Ahmed, then a 14-year-old freshman in an Irving, Texas high school was arrested, briefly detained by police and suspended for three days after bringing to school a cool clock, quote unquote, that looked like a briefcase bomb. Ahmed claimed to have invented, quote unquote, the easily assembled clock and that he had brought it to school to show it to his shop teacher. And if you do not recognize him, uh, his father there, uh, uh, clock boy's daddy, he actually debated uh, Robert Spencer right here on ABN's Trinity Channel. I believe it was in 2011, so it's been a number of years, but uh, Robert Spencer debated the father, then all of a sudden the son winds up on television for building uh, bomb-looking clocks, and that um, case has been uh, dismissed. But now, uh, here I have from Breitbart that the dad has vows to appeal the case as well. So we'll have to see what happens from all of that. But uh, speaking about schools, we have here from dailycaller.com, board to allow Muslim sermons in schools and protesters aren't happy. Local residents expressed their anger Tuesday night at a decision by a school board in a suburb of Toronto, Canada, to reverse its policy on monitoring Muslim sermons. Last September, concerned about the potential for radical Islamic propaganda infiltrating religious meetings, the Peel Regional School Board had insisted that students read prayers and sermons from an approved text. The board's decision to allow students to write their own sermons resulted in angry residents storming a public meeting held to discuss the policy change. So uh, all over the place, again, we are seeing uh, this, this political correctness, and we don't want to offend anybody uh, just going overboard, and it's, it's causing uh, issues like this. You know, we just want to um, uh, appease and not offend them and that kind of thing. The, but regardless of what we do, you know, the Islamic worldview is the same. You know, any Muslim who truly strives to follow Muhammad and spread Islam, invite people to Islam, and eventually fight the unbelievers— uh, their worldview doesn't change based on our response to them. The only response from us that can actually change the worldview of a Muslim is if their worldview changes. And that is the, comes from the power of the Holy Spirit when we share the gospel with a Muslim and they repent and put their trust in Christ. That is when their worldview changes. That is when their life will change. That is when the course of their life and, the life and their life goals will change because now they know the truth rather than a lie. It wouldn't be awesome if all the, the zeal that we see um, that Muslims have, if they had that same zeal for the truth, for the Lord Jesus Christ, that they do for Muhammad, that would be a great thing. That's another reason why I love Muslims. I know they're very devout in what they believe, but I want them to believe the truth and not a lie. So again, uh, one more reason why we should be sharing the gospel with Muslims so that their worldviews can change and here from uh, Bangladesh, this is actually atimes.com, a Bangladeshi proposal on child marriage is step backwards. 
If Parliament approves changes to a law to allow girls below 18 to be wed in special cases, this is an alarming move, says Global Alliance. Bangladesh will be taking a step backwards in efforts to end child marriage if Parliament approves changes to a law which would permit girls below 18 to be married in special cases, quote unquote. A global alliance of charities said on Thursday, the poor South Asian nation has one of the highest rates of child marriage in the world, despite a three decade old law which bans marriage for girls under 18 and men under 21. Now, Bangladesh, I believe, is number four on the list of countries in the world with the most Muslims. Of course, Indonesia is number one. And then we have um, uh, Bang- Bangladesh as number four. And we have India, we have uh, Pakistan, uh, over half of the Muslims in the world. Okay, if there's 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. About 1 billion don't live in the Middle East. They live in, in Asia or other places out. Again, uh, Indonesia has a ton, but they live outside the Middle East. And uh, if Bangladesh, having uh, over probably about 170-ish million um, Muslims, uh, if, if they change this, of course, that would be great. And of course, if they change the whole child marriage thing throughout every, every country where it's still in place, that would be great as well. But Morocco, uh, Morocco has actually banned the burqa. This is from clarionproject.org. It says, although the decision was motivated by security concerns, the ban is also an important step in the fight against religious extremism. It says, the Moroccan Interior Ministry has ordered garment makers and retailers throughout the North African country to stop making and selling burqas. They have further been instructed to liquidate their stocks of the garment within 48 hours or risk con- uh, confiscation. On January 9th, ministry officials visited markets to hand deliver written notices informing sellers and tailors of the decision to stop production and sale of the garment. The notice was also posted on social media platforms. So, uh, Despite the spread of Islam, uh, of course, obviously by jihadists and militants, uh, you know, things like this as well are happening. Now, there are people who say, hey, you know, I, I want to wear this like at my job. It's, it's a religious thing. It, now, that, of course, hasn't happened here in, in America. In America, you know, we say, hey, you have freedom of religion as long as you your religious uh, actions do not infringe upon the constitutional rights of other Americans then you can practice your religion freely. Now, of course, here and in other countries, it's okay, let's ban the burqa, let's do this, let's do that. You know, those are all, of course, going to be uh, effective to different degrees and in certain ways. But that, again, I mean, let's say every, you know, burqa was done away with, right? There's no more burqa, burqas in the world. Let's say that all the jihadists throughout the world said, okay, well, I'm going to become nominal, I'm going to become moderate, I'm going to become liberal, whatever. All that's going to do is make this world a better place to go to hell from, because every single one of these people are going to die and stand before God. And if they die without Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is found in the New Testament, they will end up in hell, not because of which particular sin they committed, but because God is so good and God is so just and so holy and so perfect, he cannot let a guilty person go. So are you going to look to the lies of Islam? thinking that your own works can make up for your bad, that your good works can bribe the holy God of the universe? No, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who was sinless, who lived a perfect life, who never sinned, who died on the cross and rose from the dead three days later that we can be saved. So we need to be sharing the gospel with everyone everywhere. Now, gospelherald.com had a new story come out, say pastor in Uganda attacked after shake sent to kill him, becomes Christian. Islamic extremist ambushed a church leader in eastern Uganda last week after a sheikh they had sent to assassinate him at his church service instead became a Christian. Listen to this. In Amiria, about 170 miles northeast of Kampala, Bishop George Edwu of the Pentecostal Upright Church had arrived at his church building at 5 a.m. on January 2nd for a morning devotion when he saw a young man on the ground. He got out of his car to attend him, he told Morning Star News. When he reached the young man, six masked men appeared and took hold of him, demanding that he reveal the whereabouts of the sheikh. 
Islamic teacher, who had converted at his church service, a 24-year-old father of two whose name is withheld for security purposes. Some of the gang began slapping and kicking Bishop Edwu. Others hit him with sticks. He says, I fell down, a vehicle with bright lights flashed, which scared them away, and they disappeared into the nearby bush. The vehicle arrived and took me into the church compound. Inside the church building, we found a letter with a threatening message. We are going to destroy your church unless you show us where name withheld is. Sunni Muslim extremists had sent the sheikh, trained in Islamic proselytization, to the church's worship service on December 4th to kill Bishop Edwu, the pastor said. As the bishop was preaching on hearing and understanding the voice of God, the sheikh was sitting among the congregation of 200 people when the power of the gospel convicted him of his sin, Bishop Edwu said. The young man rushed up to the podium and fell at the preacher's feet. Bishop Edwu said he stopped preaching and questioned the young man as tears rolled down Tears rolled down the sheikh's cheeks. He answered, I was sent to come and attack, to kill the pastor and destroy the church, according to the bishop. He repented as the shaken congregation looked on. Bishop Edwu prayed for him, and the would-be assassin put his faith in the Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. News of the former sheikh's conversion hit the community like lightning, and the young man knew he had to go into hiding. He and his wife and their two children, ages two and four, took refuge in an undisclosed location. Praise God for that. Like I said earlier, God is reaching Muslims throughout the world, and that is uh, amazing, and we can be part of that. When we say, here I am, Lord, use me, and we go out to reach our Muslim neighbors with the gospel. But uh, despite these great stories— uh, have here from ChristianityToday.com, worst year yet, the top 50 countries where it's hardest to be a Christian. And of course, that uh, is, is, is a, a great example of that, is the, what I just talked about before, of a country where you have to go in hiding for becoming a Christian. As you can see here, that there's many countries throughout the world that it is hard to be a Christian, so you want to pray for Christians throughout the world, at the same time, share the gospel, because that's how more, more people become Christians, and more people can believe the truth rather than a lie. Now, interestingly, persecution.org came out with their 2016 uh, Hall of Shame report, as usual. But interestingly, the United States is now on this Hall of Shame report as well. It says, throughout the U.S., current events and shifting perceptions are causing conflicts between Christian beliefs and public sentiment. The cultural shift affects Christian businesses, organizations, and individuals through legal action. Free speech infringement, public expressions of faith, and employment. So on this map here, you can see that the U.S. is marked green, which means new and noteworthy. So yes, although the U.S. is not, the Christians in the U.S. are not facing what Christians face in other countries, we, it's, this, it's this trickling down effect of you know, persecute, not physical persecution at this point, but lot, lots of rhetoric going on and, you know, Christian business owners being sued uh, for this and that. So interestingly, the U.S. has now made the persecution.org's Hall of Shame report. But more uh, praises to the Lord here from ChristianPost.com. Deaf Muslim, listen to this, deaf Muslim man who learns about the gospel for first time leaves Islam for Christ. Praise God. Listen here. A Muslim man who was deaf gave his life to Christ after a friend invited him to a Christian church where he was introduced to a sign language translation of the scriptures for the first time. According to Florida-based Wycliffe Associates, one of the world's leading Bible translation organizations, a Muslim man referred to by the name Ayo recently left Islam and accepted Christianity after attending a Wycliffe outreach event hosted by one of their church partners in a country that hasn't been named for security purposes. It says, I know God used my friend to invite me to church today. Io was quoted as saying, according to Wycliffe Associates on, the, on, on their blog, I have never been a Christian in a, church, a Christian church before. 
I have grown up as a Muslim. I mostly go to the mosque with my family. I have to, since my family accepts me, expects me to. But as you know, there is nothing that I gain by attending the prayers. And friends, that is probably uh, like you, our Muslim friends out there. You 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 do um, the the praying five times a day, and it's just this this mechanical robotic prayer over and over, uh, thinking that that it pleases Allah, that it pleases the God of the universe, but it does not please him. Your prayers do not build up your good scales uh, to outweigh your bad. We as Christians pray to God all day long. The Bible says to pray without ceasing, but we are praying to the true God. Um, Not that two gods actually exist and they're different gods. We're saying that Islam has a false view of who God is. It's an idol in your mind thinking, I think God is this way. I think doing this pleases him but wrong on both. He's not that way. Doing those things do not please him. He is well pleased by his son, just as we read in the New Testament. This is my son in who I am well pleased. He is pleased with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is perfect, who isn't a sinner and trying to do good things to make up for it. He is perfect, and that's why he is the only one who pleases God, and that's why he is the one who we need to repent uh, we need to print, repent towards God and put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is happening everywhere, because also from Christian Post, is scores of Muslims turning to Christ in the Middle East. Churches expecting millions of converts. So you hear that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Well, no, it's the fastest false religion, or it's the fastest growing false religion in the world. And of course, that also has to do with birth rates, and it has to do with the theology of believing that every person who was born is a pure monotheist, believing uh, in Allah, and then all of a sudden when they, um, so they're born a Muslim, you know, quote unquote, and then all of a sudden when they, you know, become anything other than Muslim, all of a sudden they've they've become apostate, theologically, right? You don't hear that. You hear here in the West, oh, non, you know, um, apostates are people who leave Islam. Well, theologically, you have left Islam if you are not a Muslim right now, okay? That is according to the theology. That's why uh, people who do not sugarcoat things say, hey, when the Bible, when the Mus- when the uh, Quran talks about non-Muslims, uh, when, it, when, it, when it talks about apostates, well, any Muslim who knows their theology is thinking, well, that is anyone who is not a Muslim right now. And that is why, again, people need to be educated about Islam. And more importantly, they need to know the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible. Have here from WND.com, liberal Ninth Circuit judge side with man reading Bible. Uh, this is another case here in America where, again, uh, Christians are having a, a light type of persecution. Again, no phys- not, not physically being hurt. But, oh, you can't, you can't speak here. You can't read the Bible here in this, in this public place that kind of thing. So uh, amazingly, the Ninth Circuit has uh, sided with him for that. Uh, moving on to, uh, to uh, again, to barenakedislam.com. It says, un-American, newly elected Somali Muslim representative from Minnesota Stan takes oath of office on a gigantic Quran. It says, why is she allowed to take the oath of office on a holy book that calls for the killing of unbelievers, Jews and Christians, promotes wife beating, allows forced child marriage, and advocates advocates execution of homosexuals and apostates, not to mention the overthrow of non-Islamic governments. Why is a woman who allegedly engaged in marriage and immigration fraud allowed to serve in the House of Representatives? This is a result of Barack Hussein Obama's policy of using taxpayer money to fund the import, import of tens of thousands of Muslims from terrorist nations like Somalia. So I have a video that we want to play here for you. Let's go ahead and play that now. You can see what's happening uh, with this situation. And if you could please say, I do, after I finish. With two simple words. Ilhan Omar took her place in the Minnesota House of Representatives, accomplishing what few people thought possible during an election year that put Muslim Americans at the center of heated political debate about immigration and terrorism. The Muslim community needs a win. Muslim American Society of Minnesota Executive Director Assad Zaman was one of dozens of supporters who watched Ilhan Omar Do you solemnly swear or affirm take the ceremonial oath of office on a commemorative Quran 
on the floor of the Minnesota House of Representatives. I do. Congratulations. Welcome to the House of Representatives. The ethos of America that can embrace a Somali-American uh, hijab-clad woman as their representative, I think that says something amazing about America. The negativity of the 2016 presidential election campaign is now a footnote for Ilhan Omar, who views her role in the national conversation about Muslim Americans as a positive one. It sort of provides a counter-narrative to say, well, all is not bad, um, that, that there is good. Uh, and if someone like Ohan, who has all of the odds against her, can succeed, um, then, you know, we are able to see that as a country we do have a balance of both good and bad um, and that we just have to figure out a way to come together and make sure that we are amplifying the voices of good. While Omar is the first Somali-American legislator serving in Minnesota state government, she did not win the support of the majority of the Somali-American voters in her Minneapolis district. She was elected to her seat by courting voters outside the diaspora. Politics is the art of inclusion and Ilhan Omar has practiced inclusive politics and she has been able to put forth a candidacy that is attractive to a largely white liberal group of, of voters and she has convinced them that she is the best candidate. She's also convincing others beyond Minnesota that anything is possible, something she says was reinforced to her on a recent visit to the Horn of Africa. Hearing about young people who are uh, running for elected office in Kenya and in Somalia um, because they were inspired by my race, I think messages like that truly put things into focus and sort of, I think, amplify the level and the magnitude of what we've been able to do here. The magnitude of Omar's contributions as a state lawmaker in Minnesota is yet to be measured. But Zaman says Omar now has the attention of more than just the voters in Minnesota. So this is a big deal. I think the whole world is watching what we're doing here today. Which is why Ilhan Omar says one of her biggest challenges now is living up to all the hopes and expectations people have for her as she charts an historic path forward. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, St. Paul, Minnesota. So... She comes from Somalia and Kenya, where women do not have the rights like they do here in America. Now she is here in America, uh, being sworn in with her hand on a Quran, a book which is incompatible with the U.S. Constitution and American freedom. So if you want to know a different perspective, a woman who also grew up in Somalia and Kenya, I suggest that you read the book Infidel by Ayan Hirsi Ali, who... Uh, as, you, as you can tell, there's a little, little resemblance to that woman because they're both from the same place. But Ayan Hirsi Ali will actually tell you a different story, or at least what it is like over there. And she, Ayan, uh, who has a, a, a death sentence on, on her, uh, has left Islam uh, because she knows of the many uh, cruelties that are, that are in Islam and that women go through in these third world countries. So um, interesting, though. Interestingly, though, uh, this woman who you just saw this video about, also here from creepingsharia.wordpress.com, it says Minnesota historic Muslim, historic, quote unquote, uh, Muslim primary winner reportedly married her brother. So uh, please check out that news story as well. Uh, that, that was actually back from August. So uh, that happened in August. Now, more recently, we have the video that you just saw. So uh, please go there to check that out and hear more about this woman. But moving on, we only have a, a few minutes left in the show. Uh, we have from WND, sneaky feds plot to grab state election power and latest scheme and move to let U.S. government centralize America's voting system. Uh, this is something you definitely want to check out because this all has to do with this whole Russian hacking thing and all, all that uh, hogwash that you are hearing about, okay, let's, bl you know, they, the, the, the liberals, the Democrats didn't, didn't win, so okay, now let's blame it on any, anything and everything, right? Let's blame it on the Russians. Uh, let's do a recount, let's do this, let's do that. Anything they can do to delegitimize Donald Trump. But uh, Donald Trump is supposed to be inaugurated next Friday, January 20th, 
So, again, we do want to continue to pray for him, pray for his salvation, pray that he would make wise decisions. And I have here from uh, the organicprepper.ca three events in 2016 that profoundly change everything. And the three things listed here are RIP mainstream media. As we more and more people have been learning, uh, the fake news, lots of this fake news is actually in the mainstream media itself, not in the alternative news sources, some of which are satire. But there are many reputable alternative news sources that are not bought and paid for like the mainstream media and don't try to fit everything into their agenda. So it says RIP mainstream media to the election of Donald Trump, which was a huge shock to a lot of people. And also, of course, Russia, 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 blaming everything on Russia. Everybody's a Russian hacker. Anybody I don't like is a Russian hacker. And uh, they are the reason why Trump won. No, Hillary lost fair and square, and even recount efforts have shown that there's been ba voter ballot fraud uh, on the Democratic side anyway, especially in Michigan. But people are not happy, and we have here um, planned violence. Organizer of Trump inauguration mass riots doesn't believe in peaceful transition of power because uh, they don't. They're mad, right? They're mad. They don't want this to happen. But even uh, Donald Trump himself called out uh, the fake news. Check out this video clip here. Uh, and he will uh, he gives uh, CNN, uh, which some people are calling the Clinton News Network. He's giving them a message himself. So check out this video right here. I think it was uh, disgraceful, disgraceful that the intelligence agencies allowed any information that turned out to be so false and fake out. I think it's a disgrace. And I say that and I say that. And that's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. I think it's a disgrace. That information that was false and fake and never happened got released to the public. As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage, writing it, I think they're going to suffer the consequences. They already are. And as far as CNN going out of their way to build it up, and by the way, we just found out I was coming down, Michael Cohn, I was being, Michael Cohn is a very talented lawyer, he's a good lawyer in my firm, who has just reported that it wasn't this Michael Cohn they were talking about. So all night long, it's Michael Cohn. I said, I want to see your passport. He brings his passport to my office. I say, hey, wait a minute, he didn't leave the country. He wasn't out of the country. They had Michael Cohn of the Trump Organization was in Prague. It turned out to be a different Michael Cohn. Sure. It's a disgrace what took place, it's a disgrace. And I think they ought to apologize sure. to start with Michael Cohn. Sir, since you're attacking us, can you give us a question? Go since ahead. You're, no, Mr. President-elect. Go, go Mr. ahead. President-elect, since you are attacking no, our, news not you. Not you. Your your, your attacking our news organization, not you. can you give us a chance? Your organization You are attacking our news organization. Your organization Can you give us a chance to go. ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state? Can, Quiet. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically? She's asking a question. Don't be rude. Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorically? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. can you stay categorically that nobody... No, Mr. President-elect, that's not go appropriate. Ahead. Okay, so we see here a CNN representative getting owned by Donald Trump himself, calling out the, uh, some people are calling the Clinton News Network fake news. So uh, that is uh, a, a blow to the left, especially with them yelling and screaming fake news, fake news to everybody on the right. Now, we're going to skip the next video. Let's just go to 25. Uh, the, obviously, the media hates Trump. Uh, they uh, don't want him to be in office. Obviously, we've seen every single move possible uh, trying to get Hillary to win the election, which, again, she lost. All the different media outlets hate Trump, which is interesting because back when o o Obama was getting into office, the media loved him, right? Oh, the first black president, which, again, being black, being white, being yellow, brown, the color doesn't matter. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, all super excited and looked how looked how Obama turned out. Right now. Yeah. All these different outlets who hate Trump. And at the same time, look at look at all the positives that happened just in the first few days of him winning the uh, the election. Right. He's still not even uh, uh, inaugurated yet. That's not happening till next Friday. But. Uh, we, we are seeing a lot of people mad. So why are they mad? Are they mad for a bad reason or are they mad for a good reason? But again, everybody's hating Trump, or not everybody, a lot of people, a lot of people who uh, are, are using fake news and all these other excuses to say, hey, he shouldn't be president. 
Uh, so anyway, it'll be interesting. And next Friday will be interesting. And between now and next Friday, be interesting. And we again pray for Donald Trump, his salvation, his protection, and that the Lord would use him, uh, that he would make wise decisions. So we want to thank you for being with us. But check that out again. Um, Muslims are not our enemies. They are people who need the gospel. And that is why we need to repent of not truly following Jesus like we should be. And we need to call Muslims to repent and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And next Friday, we will be back, Lord willing, with more Islam and the news, the very day that Donald Trump is supposed to be inaugurated and become officially the president of the United States. So pray for his protection and Mike Pence. Pray for the salvation of Muslims throughout the world. God bless you. Good night. And we will see you next Friday on Islam and the news right here on ABN and the Trinity Channel.